If you want to find out what my top 10 palettes for 2021 are, then stick around. Hi there, it's Elen, and welcome back to HMM Makeup, or hmm, makeup. I am doing one of the favorite things I do on this channel, and that is to talk eyeshadow palettes. And in this case, I had a request, and her name will be on the screen. I had a request to show my top 10 palettes for 2021. Now, for the most part, these are palettes I did pick up in 2021, but there are a few exceptions. And in, uh, I think, one case, two cases. In two cases, they are palettes I have not used yet. Now, you may think that that is not appropriate, but when you see which palettes they are, I think you'll be okay with it. And I mean, and if you're not, you're <laughs> definitely entitled to your own opinion. Uh, but the uh, the two palettes that uh, that I've included that I have not used yet, I'm extremely excited about. So let's go. I'm going to start off with some small palettes and get to the bigger ones because that's just the way they're piled up. So let's get started. Oh, three palettes just tumbled and one of them ended up on the floor and nothing broke. If that's happened to you, you know exactly how I'm feeling right now. My heart is pounding out of my chest. But again, let's get into it. The first one I'm going to talk about is happened as a purchase because of this one. This is the Huda Beauty Coral Obsessions palette and it was my first foray into the Huda mini palettes and it looks like that. It's very complimentary to my eye color. I really quite enjoy it. Uh, I quite like this duochrome down here which is now pretty common uh, in various palettes and I mean I'm also a sucker for a red, so these two, plus the duo, plus the duochrome, were reason enough to to get this palette. But that's an old one. I want to show you which one this palette prompted. So this is the official number one out of the top ten for 2021, and it is the Ruby Obsessions palette. And I talked about the red in the Coral Obsessions. Well, this is. A beautiful palette that was definitely inspired by the coral palette in meaning that I wanted to to get this one in the collection uh, in my collection and I did get this one and the amethyst and the amethyst is also beautiful but this is the one that made in the top 10 made it in the top 10 because I find that it's very complementary to my eye color and it's very flattering uh, on me so I'm I would be hard-pressed to not keep this palette in my collection and I have a growing love of small palettes so this definitely fits the bill. The next one is a palette that I really would not have come across if it weren't for uh, my significant other. He brought it back from Germany and it's a Kiko palette. I understand it is available in the States but in Canada it's pretty darn hard to find. Uh, it is called the uh, Glamour Multi Finish Palette and it is the third one in the series. I think they have nine. And it's one that I keep with me a lot. And it is in my to-go bag uh, at all times. There's going to be a video on my to-go bag and what its uh, contents are. If you're curious, it's coming up pretty soon. So this is the palette cover. And on the inside, it is quite tiny pans but they seem all to be very well curated nine pan palettes and I'm partial to these colors down here and all the mattes perform really well. I did a number of looks with uh, this palette. I'll put some in the cards and uh, probably some links in the um, comments, not comments, but the description box below. Yeah. Like I said, I'm getting into small palettes and I was just giddy when I got this one. it Like I said, it's in my to-go bag, so I obviously really like it. The third one I'm going to talk about is not all glitz and glam. It is very functional, and it's the one I'm wearing on my eyes today. And it's, it's a very plain look. I don't even have mascara on yet today, uh, but it's this one, and it's my Pan That palette. 
and I haven't done an update on pen my palette for a while and that's okay here's the deal this is not an effort I like this palette so much I use it daily the mattes are amazing it's the Smashbox matte exposure and take a look at where I'm at I I'm sad that a number of the shadows are going. Now these two are buxom shadows, but this matte, this matte, and these two are all Smashbox matte exposure uh, shadows. And I will be so sad when they're done because they are so beautiful. And by beautiful, I mean they are easy to work with. They're beautiful mattes. They blend like a dream. Uh, this one is the light beige one that you saw in the palette. It's the lightest color that I have left. Um, I'm going to be really sad when that palette is done. I'm in no hurry to finish it. And it's, it's an effortless pen, that palette, because I want to finish it. Because I want to use it. It's not that I'm trying to finish the shadows. I want to use the shadows. I don't want to stop using the shadows. That is why I am very excited to show you this one. So the Smashbox Matte Exposure that I just showed you is not really the one I wanted to show you in this top 10. It's this one because in 2022, this is probably going to be the replacement for the matte exposure, which is why I want to mention it in the top 10 because I'm so excited to make way more use out of it next year. Uh, and again, it's because of the quality of the matte exposure. I know I'm getting the same quality for face products and eyeshadow in this palette. So super excited that I have another one of these Smashbox palettes because they are so good. The most underrated mattes ever, in my opinion. Next, I want to talk about a palette that's actually not a purchase from 2021, but as I was talking about some newer palettes, this one came to mind and I featured it recently in a video and it's because of the richness of the jewel tone shades in here. Um, this is the Like a Boss palette by Violet Boss and I would say arguably it is a, an amazing palette in my collection uh, and it's this kind of T-zone in the palette that, that make it so memorable. And when I want a festive look, when I want a glam look, this is automatically a palette that I think of. That one, and to a lesser extent, the Ciate Morello 2, which was, I know it was a limited edition, but this is also a palette that I think of for glam looks. Uh, there are a number of beautiful shadows in here and combos that just make a beautiful eye look. And I would be super, super hard pressed to ever get rid of these two palettes in my collection. Although this one's not officially in the 10, this is the one I'm putting in the 10, but I, it needed an honorable mention. Now there are three palettes in here that I have not applied on my eyes, but they are in this top 10 because of the color story and, and I stand by it. This Metropolis palette, which I got for Christmas, is the most intriguing palette ever. <laughs> uh, the color story is amazing, and it just it just speaks to me on so many levels that I am so pleased that it's in my collection. Apparently, it's going away, and and I would have been very sad to not end up with this in my collection. I really don't have very much Natasha Denona, and this is the one, the one that. I want it out of the whole lineup, so I'm I'm really pleased. There are golds and bronzy colors and blues and greens and beautiful golds. I just it overall it just drips with potential for eye looks and yeah, it's almost like I'm hesitant to use it because there's so much I want to do with it. It's almost like overwhelming, but. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I promise. Uh, the swatches video is right there for you. And speaking of Natasha Denona, there is another one of hers in this uh, top 10 and it is the Love Palette. It's swatched beautifully and I am looking forward to doing some looks uh, with it for you because the color story is shockingly good. <laughs> 
Um, just like the Metropolis, the curation, in this case of a 15, palette, 15 pan palette, is lovely. Absolutely lovely. And there's a similar story with this Vintage Dawn palette from Ace Beauté. Now this is the old formula that I picked up uh, some time ago, and I haven't swatched it yet. But the jewel tones in it are absolutely beautiful. Like these two right here and this diamond looking color right there. The color story is fantastic. And again, almost like the Metropolis. I, it's one of those palettes I want to do justice. So Metropolis is up, up there. This is a smaller palette, obviously. It's not as intense, but it looks like there's so much promise that I, I don't want to be disappointed, but it's it comes to mind a great deal because because I'm looking forward to, to playing with it. And I do think that for 12 pans, they did a really great job of curating this one. Now this one is controversial. Work with me here for a sec. I'm not poo-pooing this one. It's in my top 10. It's lovely, and it's lovely as a topper palette. That is what I use it for, and it's it does wonders for this. Anytime I have a nice look on camera, and I'm not pointing to a specific palette, I have likely used my Smashbox Matte Exposure and one or two of the toppers in this palette. This palette and a matte palette match made in heaven. This is truly, in my opinion, a lovely topper palette. And that's how I think of it in my collection and I reach for it regularly. You don't have to agree. I'm letting you know how I use it. And I have no regrets in purchasing this palette. And I got it right from the get-go. Next is this one, which I was very nervous about. I was worried that I would not think that it was worth the money. And Pat McGrath palettes are extremely expensive, and one could argue that there's no reason for purchasing a palette like that uh, for that price. And I'm very happy that I was not disappointed. This is a beautiful palette, and I uh, purchased it for as the birthday, the birthday present uh, this year to myself. And I'm really not disappointed. It ended up being a beautiful Christmas palette and the mattes are lovely. And this green, when I did a look uh, with it on camera, I was kind of shocked at just how lovely it is. And with green eyes, I thought it would not go super well. It was, it was beautiful, beautiful. So I'm, I'm quite sold on this palette. I really enjoy these mattes and mostly everything. There's one look I did with this one that I wasn't as crazy about, but overall the quality is there. I have no question that I can open this palette and create a, a lovely look. So it gets high marks in my opinion. And I do believe we are at the last one. And this one, just like the Vintage Dawn, I have not used yet, but I have gushed over the color story and I stand by it. And it is the Norvina Volume 5, which I just received recently because of their, I think it was a 40 or 50% off. It was a lovely sale. Um, and it is, I have three of these volume palettes, the large Norvina volume palettes. And this is by far, in my opinion, the best color story, though I am partial to burgundies and purples. And this palette does deliver and then some. I'm super, super jazzed uh, about being able to show you some looks, first off swatches obviously, but looks with this palette. And that is the 10th palette that tops off our uh, top 10 for 2021. Do you have a favorite in that top 10? If so, I would love to hear. And if you think I'm out to lunch, you don't like my style for palette choices, let me know what your uh, top palettes might be for 2021. We can all learn from each other as far as what we like the best out of the year's worth of palettes. And with that, I will say thank you so much for watching. I hope you were entertained and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. But for now, take care. Thank you.